Welcome to Carly Tackles, figuring out how to build stairs. The thought of building stairs can be really intimidating. When I found out that my outdoor steps were rotting and falling apart, I have to admit, I was a little scared to build stairs. I had no idea what it would take to build them or how to even determine the lengths and sizes of these steps. So I did some research, even watched some YouTube videos to help me get the confidence and to be comfortable with building the stairs. I want to share what I learned with you guys so that you guys can be just as comfortable and confident in building your steps. Through my research, I found some guidelines. A run typically is 10 to 10 and a half inches wide, and a rise should not be greater than 8 inches tall. Now, what did I just say? Let's review some terms. What is a rise? What is a run? A rise is the height of your stairs. A run is more of the flat part. A total rise is the total height of all of your rises put together. To help you remember the difference between rise and run, I think of it this way. I have to raise my foot above the rise. So my foot has to rise above the rise, otherwise I'm gonna fall. And then a run is I run on flat surfaces, not up in the air, so that helps me keep run for my steps. Hopefully that helps. Some other terms to review. Tread versus riser. And I don't want to confuse you. I don't want to confuse tread and run and riser and rise. Treads and riser are more referring to the materials that are going to be attached to the run and the rise. So for instance, I'm going to have two by six steps that I will attach to my run and that will make up my tread. So that's in green laying on the run if that helps. And then the riser exists if you wanted an enclosed staircase. If you want an open staircase, which then you would see all of your risers and your steps, you wouldn't have a riser. You would just have the green part attached to your run, and then the rise would be open and you could see under it. So if you want enclosed steps, you would have a tread, a riser, a tread, a riser, and a tread, and a riser. So try to keep those terms in mind as we're going through this. It'll help prevent you from getting confused. Now that we got the terms covered, there are some decisions that we need to make before we can configure our steps. First one, is what type of steps are you building? The way I have it figured is there's basically two types of steps. There's ones that build up to something like a deck or a porch in which you want your staircase to kind of be a part of your deck so that each step lands you on your deck. And this is your final landing spot. Okay, that's the one type. The second type is the type that I need and that's because I have a door that I'm actually building steps up to and I don't want to just step into my door. I want to kind of come to the same level as my door and so my actual last step is the landing point so my steps would look something more like this. I actually want the last step to be where I stand so I can open up my door. So to recap, the first version looked like this, basically, and my version has the step being the landing. So when I look at this from a rise and a run perspective, this version has three rises. Same as this version. But this one only has two runs. Whereas this one has the equal amount of runs that it has rises. So keep that in mind when building your steps. Are you building up to a deck and a porch? Then you would need one less run for your rises. And if you want your final step to be the actual stairs, then you're gonna have an equal set. And this is the version that we are building today. The next thing to decide is do you want an open staircase or an enclosed staircase? 
if you have an open staircase, you're going to see the boards and the risers that are underneath your stairs. You're going to actually see the boards that hold your steps on. If you have an enclosed one, what that means is you're actually going to have a board here that comes down a certain degree and you can't see through it. It's all protected. You need to decide this because when we make our cuts, we're going to have to take this into account on one of the ends. Next thing is to consider is what materials are you going to be using? As a guideline, most air risers are made by from 2 by 12 boards. Okay. Now, if these are outside, you want to make sure that your material is rated for ground contact because they're going to be on the ground. For each of my steps, I'm going to be using 2 by 6s. And I'll, I'll take up two of these boards to make up a one step. Keep in mind that the actual dimensions of a two by six is really one and a half inches wide by five and a half inches. So if I put two of these boards together, my steps are, are going to be 11 inches deep. And for the enclosure piece, which is kind of more like a kick plate to help hide it, I'm going to be using a one by six board. And my actual dimensions of a one by six is three quarters of an inch and then a five and a half inches tall. Now it's time to determine your height of your stairs. I found these instructions slightly confusing when I did my research. They say to measure the height of where your stairs are going to come out and you use a level like you see here in this picture. If I know my stairs are going to come out here, I need to measure this because you could have a slope. That makes perfect sense. But what I couldn't figure out is if I haven't done the math to determine how many rises and runs I have, how far is my stairs going to be? I have no idea. So ideally, uh, this is how you would do it if you have an idea of where your stairs are going. But what you can do is you can either guess a kind of where your stairs will be and then we can figure that out in more details once we do the formula which i'll show you how to do or if your ground's pretty level you can just measure your base of where they're going up to so if you're going up to a deck you could use the base of 12. okay so that leads us to doing the actual math for all of those that love math, you're going to love this. There's even fractions involved and in conversions to decimal points. All those that hate math, quit whining. It's not that bad. Um, so our basic formula is you have that height that we just determined divided by 8 inches. And I, my question when I was watching this, why 8 inches? Well, in our guidelines that we learned that rises are not, a rise is typically less than than eight inches, it's never more. And you have to be careful with your steps. If you make them off too much or too high, people are gonna stub their toe on it and you're gonna have people falling down your steps. So you start with eight because that is the max. And so if you take this division, you are ensuring that your rise will never be greater than eight inches if you use this formula. Okay, so just follow this example and hopefully it makes a little bit more sense. Our height is 21 inches tall okay so that's that's 21 so we're going to divide that by 8 which actually comes out to 2.625 now you always round up to a whole number even if that number is 2.1 you don't round down you round up so this is going to tell us how many risers we need and so according to this, I need three risers because that's what it rounds to. So basically it's saying, I'm going to go up, I'm going to go up, I'm going to go up three times to be able to get to my height. Okay. And since I know that for this project, I picked that second stair type where I want my last step to actually be the landing spot and I'm not going up to a deck, 
I know that my quantity of rises is going to equal my quantity of runs. So that means I have three runs as well. Now, now remember, in our stair guidelines, a run is typically 10 inches or 10 and a half inches long. So we can use this to determine how far out our steps would be from our base, which can help us recalculate the height if we need to. I had picked 10 inches, and the reason I picked 10 inch runs is because when building steps, I like to have an overhang. You see most steps that have a nice little overhang, and it's normally about an inch. Well, because I'm using two by six boards, it turns out that my steps are, when you add them together, 11 inches deep. If I choose a 10 inch rye, or run, that means I have an inch of overhang, and it just works out perfectly. So I'm gonna pick a 10 inch run. So that means that up here in my drawing, that each one of these runs is really 10, 10, and 10, because I know I have three rises and my runs have to equal my rise. So that means I have three runs at 10. And when you do the math, that comes out to 30 inches. My total runs is 30 inches. So now I can go back to my area and measure the 30 inches from my base and then using a level, get my height. So when using a level off my deck or my wherever I need to be, make sure that I get the real height because that's what we're gonna need to determine how high our rises are gonna be. If you redo this and it turns out that your number of rise is four instead of three, then that also pushes this out another 10 inches and now you need to remeasure from 40 inches. It's not gonna increase like that all the time because it's more of a division thing, but eventually you'll get it locked down so that you have the right amount of rise and you have the distance for your height. So for our example, we have 21 inches tall. We determined that when you divide that by eight, we had three risers. Now what we're going to do is determine the height of our risers. Our height of our risers has a formula of height divided by number of rise equals the height of our rise. So when you plug in your formula here, our height of our rise ends up being seven, basically 21 divided by three is seven inches tall. So now that we know this, we can have something to measure and draw on a board. Keep in mind, math doesn't always work out that great. You can have decimals. And this is where my fun math skills come into play. You have to convert that to a fraction so that you can put it on a tape measure and determine your lengths of your board. So for example, if it came out to 7.375, that 0.375 is really 3.8. Now that we have our math figured out, let's do a little recap here before we draw it out on our boards, which will be our, la our next step after this. So we're gonna have three rises and three runs that we're going to draw out on our two by six or two by 12 board. And that's because I wanted that top landing step. If you did not want to do that and you were going to a deck, you would not have this step, but your rise would still be accounted for. So that way the, it's equal rise from this step to this step onto your deck. And so that's why you have more rises. Okay. Does that make sense? So our rise based off our math will be seven inches tall. So this guy will be seven. And we picked a 10 inch run because our treads is gonna be a total, our tread is gonna be one and a half inches thick because that's the actual dimension of two by sixes and it'll be 11 inches wide because that's five and a half and five and a half. And that would leave us about an inch overhang. We also know that my risers are gonna be three quarters of an inch thick. 
and then when you draw this out on the boards, you'll see why that matters. Thanks for watching Carly Tackles Figuring Out How to Build Stairs. Make sure you check out my next video, Carly Tackles Actually Building the Stairs. If you liked this video or thought it was useful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you would like to see more of these videos, please subscribe to my channel. Carly Tackles, DIY, Tools and Gadgets, Tips and Tricks. Thank you.